Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me for this yin yoga class. In this class, we'll be exploring the theme of intuition. How much do we trust our own inner sight? How do we know when we need a change in perception? In this class, we'll use some familiar yin yoga poses as well as some poses from restorative yoga to explore our own inner sight, our insight. For this class, we will use a bolster or some pillows, some books or yoga blocks, and maybe a blanket. So take a few moments, gather what you need, and I'll see you on the mat. start our yin practice sitting up on a couple of blocks or pillows or something uh, just to elevate your hips up from the floor and you'll come to a seated position and you'd like for the the big femur bones to just be uh, moving away from the body at about a 45 degree angle here so this really should help you feel freed up to sit up nice and tall. And we'll just drop in here, lowering the gaze or closing the eyes. A nice cleansing breath, just maybe sighing it all out. You can feel your shoulders just begin to sink away from your ears. And just allow yourself to drop in here. Bringing yourself out of the world of doing and into the world of being. You know, the pillow or the floor or blocks that are supporting your spine. Feel your hands wherever you've chosen to rest them. And see if you can shift your attention here, feeling first the sensation of your hands touching your legs and then your legs touching your hands now internally allow your eyes to rise up to that place behind the eyes and in between the eyebrows. This place where the movie of the mind often projects its images. And imagine that you can see a point of light there. Point of white or violet colored light. Keep your internal gaze on this light, just focusing on it, allowing your attention to remain there. I 
As you exhale, imagine that that light can melt down into a cool water and that you feel this water rinsing any stress or tension or discomfort from the body. Imagine that water flowing down, rushing down, maybe dripping off of fingertips or knees, drawing the shoulders down with it, sweeping away any tension. Now when you're ready, inhale your hands just to heart center, gently placing the palms of the hands on each other. And then on your next exhale, just allow yourself to tuck your chin and drop your head down, bowing your head to your heart. Just allow yourself to enjoy the sensation of this gentle stretch in the back of the neck. Here as we bow the wisdom of our mind and intellect and the wisdom of our intuition to the wisdom of our heart, it's often a good time to set a sankalpa or intention. I invite you tonight to this intention of using this practice to begin to know yourself more intimately on a spiritual or mental, emotional level. And if that intention is not an invitation that resonates with you, Feel free to seek your own. Ready? Inhale the head back up. And allow your hands to release back down to your legs. You can let your eyes flutter open if you haven't already. And we'll shift forward now. We're going to come into a fire log pose. So whatever you may have had supporting you, you can shift that out of the way. And I'm going to take off my fuzzy sloth socks. So for our fire log pose, we're going to set this up with one leg parallel to the front of the mat. And then we'll bring the other leg on top. Now, if you're like me and you have quite a lot of space here in between the knee and the floor, I encourage you to bring some pillows or blocks or blankets to support this leg. The other thing that we're going to do here is we're going to keep the feet flexed to protect the knees. So allow your knees, I'm sorry, your feet to be flexed here. And then just sit up nice and tall. You'll feel a deep stretch through the outside of the thigh here. If for some reason this shape just is not accessible to you, you can also come to a seated pigeon. 
So just allowing one leg to be straight, take the ankle over the thigh and then draw the leg closer to the body. So take just a moment here to come into firewall pose or seated pigeon. And we're gonna settle in for about three minutes on each side here. And you can allow your eyes to close or just lower your gaze. Breathing with this deep sensation. And perhaps again, bringing your attention to that place behind the closed eyes and in between the eyebrows. to focus on this area behind the eyes. Perhaps ask yourself, how much do I trust my own intuition? How much do I trust my own intuition? I have a sense that you should follow a certain path not follow a certain path. Which do you trust that feeling? To allow the knees to be heavy. Having any areas of strong sensation, send your breath there. feeling so strong sensation can bring about anxiety. So just know if you're experiencing that, that that is normal. Just allow yourself to hold that feeling gently. Just being present. Gently releasing from the side, moving very slowly and carefully with yourself. We'll bring the soles of both feet to the floor. You can support yourself with your hands right behind your hips and just allow yourself to windshield wiper the knees back and forth. You might feel that little rebound sensation, that feeling of the blood coming back into the joints, back into the muscles. Ready, we're gonna take this to the other side. So bring what was your top leg on bottom now for me, it's my left leg. And again, we'll bring that shin parallel to the front of the mat, stack any other leg on top. Maybe bringing in a block or pillow. Allow yourself to settle back in here. Just 
smoothing out the breath. You know, focus back to that point of light. Eyes. Maybe considering the question, how open am I to receiving new information, to new ways of approaching life? Call for change. How open are you to that? What's your level of willingness? Consider new solutions. Allow your awareness to briefly explore through the body, looking for any places that you may be armoring or holding or resisting against the sensation. Just allow those to release and relax and practice. Let the body know that strong the sensation as you may be having right now. You got this. You can be trusted. Bring a gentle smile to your face. Just slightly lifting the corners of the mouth. And then take a deep breath. Next, exhale, begin to gently, slowly unwind. Again, bringing the soles of the feet to the floor and just windshield wipering those legs from one side to the other. Now we're going to come down to a crocodile pose. Shift. out of the way. And so crocodile pose is one that we take flat down on the belly. So you can bring yourself down to your stomach on the mat. Then you're just going to stack one hand on top of the other. And allow the center of your forehead to rest here on your stacked hands. And we'll allow the body to relax and release. Just allowing the legs perhaps to rotate away from each other. Allowing all the tension of the body to release down into the floor. Feeling the support of the hands on the forehead. 
and the support of the floor all down the front of the body. We'll take just a moment here to switch the hands so that the hand that's on top is moved to the bottom. And the hand that's on the bottom is moved to the top. In this time when we are isolated from each other, we often are not having the same amount of human contact that we have had at other times. And so this pose is a way of giving yourself a hug. This pose stimulates all the same places on the front of the body that we stimulate when we hug someone. Take a moment to just let that in. Oh, God, buddy. You might say to yourself, all the answers I need, I see within me. All the answers I need, I see within me. Everybody, you can allow that to release and inhale yourself up to your elbows. So you're going to stack the elbows right underneath the shoulders and allow the fingers to reach out nice and long, reaching those fingers out so long that as we place them down, we actually can feel ourselves pulling back slightly against the uh, fingertips as we come into Sphinx Pose. And Sphinx Pose, allow your gaze to rise out in front of you. See if you can find a place here to rest your gaze. If you would like to take Sphinx Pose supported, you can bring your pillows or your bolster up underneath the body, allowing the elbows to line up on the other side of the bolster. And so whether you're taking this supported or not, just allow the lower body to relax here, bringing in this back bend. Gentle back bend. Finding your focal point. Pushing up in front of you. Imagine that you are able to see from that place in between the eyebrows. Imagine that vision opening up from that place. You might say to yourself here, I trust myself to see things with clarity. myself to see things with clarity. Gently scan the body. Looking 
for any places that you're holding tension. Allowing the gluteal muscles to be relaxed. Allowing the legs to be relaxed. Feet. I'll slowly shift this back to a child's pose. So moving intentionally and gently, draw the hands back to the level of the chest. Press it up slowly, moving yourself back into the child's pose of your choice, even knees far apart, but close together. And allow your head to be supported on something here. So this may mean that you choose to bring a block underneath the forehead. Or perhaps you rest your forehead on the floor. If you like here, you can gently rock the head from side to side, massaging the brow. Massaging the forehead. If you'd like a mantra for this pose, you can say to yourself, I trust my inner teacher. I trust my inner teacher. You're giving yourself that little brow massage. Just move nice and slow here. Moving with the breath. Being mindful of all the tiny little muscle movements that are required to move the head. You're ready, take a deep breath. Move up slowly from your child's pose. We're gonna come back to rest on the heels. If resting on the heels is not comfortable for you or you just need a little extra support, you can put a blanket underneath the knees or behind the knees, or even just come to a seated Position. So just find some variation here that's comfortable for you. And once you've found your way into your comfortable seat, bring the hands in front of the body and just begin to rub the hands together. Rubbing the hands together here like you're cold building some friction and some heat in the hands. And once you've got some heat here in the palms, 
bring that to stillness and bring the heels of the hands over the eyes. Now, if this isn't comfortable for you for some reason, you can always bring the hands over the heart. So just choose where you'd like to have your hands. Feeling the warmth of your hands over your eyes and your forehead. Just allowing yourself to enjoy that gentle comfort and warmth. Bring some comfort and affection and nurturance to your vision. Both your literal vision and your figurative internal vision. And as the heat begins to dissipate from your hands, you might drop one hand to your lap and use the other hand just to gently massage in between the eyebrows, the center of the forehead here, the bridge of the nose. Maybe moving over the eyebrows. Often during our daily life, we spend a lot of time concerned about things. We wear our concern on our face, drawing the eyebrows together to a frown. Sometimes allowing those worries to cloud our perception of things, our ability to exercise our intuition. So just allow this gentle massage to release some of those concerns and Nurture some of those tight facial muscles. I want to roll forward. Coming to our hands and knees. And then gently coming up onto the feet, walking the feet up towards the hands, keeping the knees nice and bent here. And coming into a rag doll. So allowing your knees to be very bent here if you need to. Bringing this stretch into the backs of the thighs, the backs calf. Just allow yourself to dangle here. If you have any lower back issues and this doesn't feel good for your back, allow yourself to rest your hands on some blocks, bolster, doing whatever you need to do here to feel supported. Like this shape to just bring a little length to the backs of the legs. Remember that if at any time the shape begins to feel like it's too much, not the right thing. Your intuition tells you this is not a good shape for your body. You can always come 
back to seated, choose a different shape. Back to focusing on the breath. Breathing into that place in between the shoulder blades. Moving down into the feet, allowing the crown of the head to be heavy. And we'll bring the fingertips to the floor or the hands to the bolster and inhale up halfway. And then as we're exhaling, we'll step the feet back. And then come through any motions here that feel good for you. You can come through a little cat cow or stretch out one foot and then the other behind you, pressing out through the heel. So just explore here. And then when you're done exploring these natural movements, we'll come to sit on the right hip. And you can bring your bolster right up close to the hip here. We're going to take the shin of the left leg into the arch of the right foot here. And then we're coming into a restorative twist. I know this is a lot of people's favorite. So coming with the um, bolster, your pillows close next to you, we're going to turn the chest toward the center of the bolster and then walk the body down so that the chest is relaxed on the bolster. And you can bring your head to either side here. You'll turn about halfway. So just allow yourself to find a comfortable position. Bringing your internal gaze back to that place in between the eyebrows. Perhaps considering the question, how much do I trust perspectives other than my own? If you'd like to turn your head to the opposite side here, you do that. Bring your head is not an obligation, just an invitation.
Allow yourself to relax and breathe into the twist. When you're ready, bring your hands back beside your chest and begin to slowly walk yourself up. And you can turn around or switch your legs in the other direction. Bring this to the other side. And so bringing yourself onto your left hip now and bringing the right shin into the arch of the left foot. We'll turn the body toward the bolster and on an exhale, just begin to walk the hands down and then allow your head to come to one side as you relax into the twist on this other side. Allow your shoulders to relax. And allow yourself to be nurtured by this pose. Continuing to lift your eyes, that place in between the eyebrows. Just allowing yourself to be the observer of the receiving. If you're ready and you'd like to turn your head to the other side, you can do that now. Maybe ask yourself the question, how do I know when a change of perspective is needed in my life? How do I know when a change of perspective is Begin to slowly draw your hands back to your chest level. And on an inhale, press yourself up from the shape. Bring yourself back to a seated position. And here we're going to use the hands to help ourselves open the legs out. And it's okay for there to be a bend in the knees here. You don't need to try to force that away. Just be gentle with yourself here, perhaps pulling the flesh out from underneath your sits bones, flexing the feet briefly 
back towards the face and then allowing them to just relax. And you could bring your block, or, I'm sorry, your, your bolster or pillows or a block in front of you here. We're gonna take a nice deep breath as we sit up straight. And then as we're exhaling, just allow yourself to drain your body over your bolster, maybe supporting your head also with a block or a book. And just allow your arms to relax down wherever they will. Quadricep muscles, your thigh muscles can be relaxed. So often, again, just allowing gravity to do the work. Yeah, but what is that? Thank you like a mantra for this shape you can say to yourself i'm open to seeing things in new ways open to seeing things in new ways Hands and fingers to release and relax. Allow your shoulder blades to spread apart from each other. Jaw to release. Allow your head to be heavy and supported. You can allow yourself to become just 5% more relaxed. to take slightly deeper breaths as you prepare to move out of the shape. Just naturally allow an inhale to carry you up from the shape. I'll move the pillows or bolster out of the way. 
We're going to use our hands to draw our knees in, allowing the right leg to cross underneath the body so that the right foot comes close to the left hip and then bringing the other leg on top so that the knees are stacked on top of each other. And if your knees don't stack directly on top of each other, just allow yourself to bring the knee over as far as is comfortable. Take the fingertips if possible and rest them in front of the ankles or on the ankles. And then just allow yourself to relax forward any amount. Bow the chin to the chest. Close the eyes. Or lower the gaze if you prefer to allow the eyes to be open. Again, if you feel deep sensation in this pose, Allow yourself to breathe into it. Now say to yourself, my mind is clear. My mind is clear. Shoulders to relax. A deep heart. More than half a Allow the sensations to rise and fall. Noticing any changes that happen along the way. Knowing that this moment, like any other moment, is not permanent. And on your next inhale, allow yourself to rise up, walking the fingertips back towards the body and slowly unwinding the legs. And if you'd like to take a little windshield wiper here or find any natural movements, maybe shaking the legs out. And then we'll Come into this shape on the other side. Stacking the knees in opposite direction, excuse me, in the opposite direction. And sitting up nice and tall. Bringing the hands to the ankles or in front of the ankles. And then relaxing forward any amount. Tucking the chin to the chest, allowing the eyes to close, or the gaze to move inward. Finding again that small light, that space between the eyebrows.
Maybe noticing here how the sides of the body are different. Perhaps the body is more receptive, more open to the shape on one side than the other. Allowing that to be okay. And if you'd like a mantra for this shape, I invite you to remind yourself, I am able to make good choices. I am able to make good choices. Relax the shoulders. Relax the muscles around the eyes. The muscles of the face. And on your next exhale, become just a little heavier. And then on your next inhale, breathe in deeply, allowing yourself to rise up from the pose. And slowly, gently unwind. Again, finding that natural movement, maybe shaking out the legs or coming into a windshield wiper. And then just finding your way into a seat that feels comfortable for you. If you'd like to sit back up on your blanket or pillow, you're welcome to do that or just come to an easy seat. And we're going to take one hand into a Y shape here as we end our practice before Shavasana with a breathing exercise. So just allow yourself with your right thumb to plug your right nostril. And here we're just going to take three slow, deep breaths in and out through the left nostril. So exhaling all the way first, and then we'll inhale. And as you're inhaling, imagine yourself drawing the inhale into that place between the eyebrows and then exhale. Inhale again, drawing the breath in between the eyes. And exhale. And one more on your own here. And then switching the fingers now so that the pinky finger is blocking the left nostril. We'll do the same on the right side. Exhaling first, and then inhaling deeply through the right nostril. And exhaling, this time imagining exhaling from that place in between the eyes. Inhaling here. Exhale, allowing the air to flow out from in between the eyebrows. And then one last time here, inhale. And exhale. Good. We'll set up for Shavasana now. 
So allow yourself to find your Shavasana. And maybe tonight you like to support the knees or bring a block behind the head. Really get cozy here. You can spread a blanket over you if you like. And so find your nice, comfortable Shavasana. And just allow yourself to relax and release. Allow the knees to rotate away from each other. And really just allow yourself here to enjoy the benefits of your practice. Deep in the mind lies our insight and inner vision. Seated there is our ability to see life as it is, opposed to what we think is happening. Rather than just looking, we can move beyond the surface of a blinkered vision conditioned by our fears and judgments. With clarity, wisdom, and intuition, we can view life through the eyes of the soul. We can become the one who has gained understanding by seeing beyond perception and into true nature. Attention goes beyond the physical act of looking. It's the most valuable thing we have. Where the eyes and the mind go, the energy and eventually the body follow. The more we can channel our attention from its many streams into one river, the more clarity and intuition we allow into our lives. Taking your focus back to the place behind your eyes and between your eyebrows, allow yourself to rest there in this place of knowing that's been opened in you by your practice. Take a deep breath, wiggle your fingers and toes. Roll to one side, pressing yourself back up to a seated position when you're ready. And you can bring your hands to heart center, keeping your eyes closed if you like, or your gaze lowered. And I'll end our class tonight with a short quote from Wayne Dyer. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Thank you so much for joining me for this practice tonight. 
and may your yoga follow you off the map. <laughs>